Welcome to the Warrior in Progress podcast. This podcast features honest and vulnerable discussions about how to make lasting mindset shifts. Through these mindset shifts, you'll be able to commit to yourself and stop sabotaging yourself so you can transform your life. I'm your host, Jennifer McKee, certified health coach and motivational speaker. Look, I've been there. I've done that. I've lost over 50% of my body weight naturally. That's 185 pounds. No surgery, no quick fixes, no diets, no weight loss gimmicks, no shakes, drugs, intense like eight hour workout sessions, and no deprivation. I lost all of that weight despite having a severe issue with my foot that limited the exercise I could do for the first part of my journey. By this point in my journey, I knew, I knew that in order to transform my life and to keep living life as a better version of myself every single day, it was 99% mindset. Even if you don't have a lot of weight to lose, this podcast is for you if you feel like you're sabotaging yourself, if you feel stuck, if you're repeating the same mistakes over and over and over, I invite you to subscribe to the Warrior in Progress podcast for motivational, inspirational, and thought-provoking topics where I'll share with you some practical tools that I've learned on my journey so far that will empower you and help you to access that inner warrior that's inside each and every one of us. And yes, I am talking to you so that you can become a better version of yourself and actually live your life instead of sitting on the sidelines and just watching life pass you by. Are you ready to get started? Let's go. Welcome back everyone to the Warrior in Progress podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. I've taken a little break from releasing a podcast episode in the last few months. Most of you know that I had my third skin removal surgery. Uh, It ended up being about a four hour surgery uh, for revisions. For those of you who don't know, I had two skin removal surgeries in 2019. And at one point I am gonna do a podcast episode about that. Um, to kind of talk a little bit about the process of that and the recovery and all of that good stuff because I have gotten a lot of questions about that and I would be more than happy to share with you um, my experience in the situation. So stay tuned for that, but uh, I am recovering very well. Um, Thank you for everybody who's reached out to me and all the support I've been given during that time. It's definitely difficult to recover from a skin removal surgery. So I just want to thank everybody who reached out to me. Thank you so much because it really meant more than you know. It really, really did. But I am recovering well. I'm back, um, you know, working on my exercise and weights and all that kind of stuff. Going to be running a half marathon race in October. So I am very excited about all of that. But I'm even more excited to give you the content of this podcast episode, which is about how to overcome your fears. What's so interesting about this is I actually recorded this podcast episode, I want to say four weeks ago, and um, something wasn't quite right with it. Something was missing uh, from the message that I wanted to share with you guys. And what was even stranger than that is when I recorded the podcast, I had plugged my microphone into a different USB port than I normally do. And I sat here and I just like talked and talked and talked, recorded myself. And then when I went to play it back, um, the sound was very low. It was unusable. And I think that that was a blessing from the universe in disguise because I do feel something was missing from that version of this episode. So since then, I have been really um, thinking about this, thinking about the message that I wanna share with you guys. And what I also had some fear related to this podcast episode. Isn't that funny? The podcast is about fear and I had fear uh, creating this for you. So it's kind of interesting, but I am pushing through the fear and I'm just going to share with you what I have learned and just share from the heart with you guys. The first thing I want to talk about is what does fear stand for? If I've coached you, you definitely know fear stands for false evidence appearing real. I used to have so many problems with panic attacks, anxiety, and that was from fear. I had a lot of fears. And if I let myself just think and think and think and think about the fears that I had, guess what? It created panic. It created anxiety. And what was interesting is none of those things were happening to me in the moment. None of those things were real, but it felt 
so damn real. It really did. It felt so real to me. Um, you know, when fear controls our actions, it really can block us from being the best version of ourselves. It can block us from our full potential. So I think that one of the keys that I've had to learn over the last several years is how to change my relationship with fear. Now I still get fears every single day. I just shared one with you. I shared that I had a fear about recording this podcast and this podcast being really, I think it was a fear of this podcast being good enough for you guys. Um, you know, so I get fears but I work hard every day to not give my power to those fears. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So I'm gonna talk first about some common fears. Fear of the unknown, fear of making a mistake, fear of being a failure, fear of being a success. Maybe you have a fear of being hurt or in pain, fear of rejection, being abandoned, unloved, unlovable, that's one of mine. Fear of being unloved or being unlovable. Fear of not being good enough. Fear of not being safe. Or another, this is another really big one. A fear of what other people think about you. Maybe you're afraid that the cancer will come back one day. Maybe you were in a marriage for many years and it didn't work out. And now you're afraid to open your heart again. All of these things. These are just some of them, by the way. There's a ton of fears that we can get. But These are some of the most common fears that we get. I hear this all the time from people I coach um, and also from myself. You know, obviously I've been through this, so I understand. So let's talk a little bit about the science behind all of this. So the first thing is we get a thought, right? That thought will create a feeling. And then that feeling can lead to an action or an inaction, Now, we're not in control of automatic thoughts. Okay, so some thoughts we get, they're they're automatic thoughts happening in our subconscious. We cannot control them, right? But it's really not the thought that we get that's the problem. It's the power that we give to the thought. So I want to give an example of this. And and you might laugh at this example because it is kind of funny, but (laughs) I was really afraid to move to Phoenix because of scorpions. I had a huge fear of scorpions and I had never seen a scorpion in person that I can remember anyway. And uh, I moved to Phoenix from London, England, and I was hoping that I would never run into a scorpion out here because I had been told, you know, if you live in a um, well, like built up area, you, you, you know, you probably won't see a scorpion. So I, I trusted that, right? So guess what? I I moved here. I was living in Phoenix for, I don't know, maybe seven months before I saw my first scorpion. (laughs) Not even a year. Didn't even make it a full year. And what was interesting is I moved into my house and I went out to the garage and the light was off. So it was kind of dark in there. Um, It was during the day. So there's a little bit of light. But anyway, I saw this thing laying on the ground and, and, uh, It didn't really look like a scorpion because it was actually a dead scorpion. So when scorpions die, their tails lay flat out. So their their tails are not curled up. And I had never seen that before. And at first I looked at this thing and, and, you know, like I said, it was very dimly lit in my garage. And I thought that it was just like a leaf or something like that. And so I wasn't even scared of anything, right? And, And then I got closer to it. I bent down and I looked at it and I realized that it was a scorpion. And I did realize it was dead. But I started freaking out because I thought, oh my gosh, (laughs) if there's a scorpion in my garage, that is way too close for comfort. So you know what happened? I got additional thoughts, right? The thoughts that I got for the next like several days were like, oh my gosh, what if like scorpions get in my house? And what if scorpions get in my bed? What if I'm sleeping and I roll over and on a scorpion and it stings me? Like, what if this happens? What if a scorpion's here? What if a scorpion falls out of my air vent? What if that happens? What if that happens? Guess what? I was what ifing. (laughs) Has anybody else done that? I know you have. Come on. I know you have. I was what ifing, what if that happens? What if that happens? And guess what? These are the thoughts I was getting and the feeling that was created from these thoughts was just a a, a fear, like just such a paralyzing fear um, that I was like actually sleeping with my lights on 
I got a black light flashlight and I would search around my bedroom to see if I could find any scorpions before I went to bed. I mean, I was petrified and all because I saw a scorpion in my garage, which was dead. And it was dead because I, I do use pest control. So I use pest control in my house. So it's like, I knew that if, if a scorpion did get in my house, it would die eventually. You know, they don't die immediately with the pest control. It takes a little bit of time, but but anyway, the point is, I got a lot of thoughts happening. My, my brain was just churning and churning and churning, and it led to these thoughts of anxiety, of fear, of um, just feeling like so scared, right? And then the action that I took as a result of that was by sleeping with the lights on and like using my black light flashlight and looking everywhere for these scorpions. And it was, it was no way to live. It was no way to live. I was getting myself all worked up over something that may or may not happen, but most probably won't happen. But, you know, I was using pest control. So if the scorpions got in my house, they would probably die. I mean, they would die, you know? So I was just coming up with all kinds of scenarios in my head about ways that like the worst possible case scenarios, right? And then you know what else I did? Oh, please don't ever do this. I started Googling. Who's done that? I started Googling. I started Googling like scorpions in bed and all kinds of stuff like that. And guess what? It has happened. And it just really fueled my fear even more. And I felt really paralyzed. I mean, I almost felt like I didn't even want to live in my house anymore. And that's pretty sad and scary. (laughs) But anyway, I had to let go of that fear. I've been in the same house now over six years. I've had to let go of, of that fear. Have I seen more scorpions? Yes. I've seen a lot of scorpions and, uh, gratefully never seen one in my house. I've seen a lot in my garage, a lot around my house. And that's a very common thing I come to find out in Phoenix, uh, for a lot of people. So what was so interesting about this, I believe the universe brought this into my life so that I could learn and and learn about fear and learn how to fully surrender to my fear and know that no matter what happens, whether there's a scorpion in my bed or not, no matter what happens, I will be okay if I trust that. And there's always like a lesson to be learned in my opinion from this, right? So you can see how thoughts can fuel feelings, which can then fuel action or inaction. So if we give power to these negative thoughts or beliefs, you know, the power to these fears, we are disempowered and we can take on a victim role. You know, why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. I don't deserve this. You know, I have a lot of love to give. Why doesn't this person love me? I guess if this person doesn't love me, then nobody's going to love me because I should have done this and that and the other. I'm not a good person. How can anybody love me if they knew who I really was. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, that's one of mine as well. You know, if somebody knew the real me with my flaws, maybe the things I've done, the things I've said, the mistakes I've made in my life, they could not love me. So the fear is I am unlovable and I'm not good enough. This stuff is all so common, right? So remember... It's not what has happened to you in your life. That's the problem. It's the stories and the thoughts that you create about the events. And I'm going to do a whole separate podcast episode on that because that is a whole separate podcast episode in itself. But, you know, when we start creating stories about about things that have happened to us, that's when these fears can be, you know, created. And a lot of these fears were created from childhood, right? So, you know, maybe um, we got in trouble as a kid with our parents, or maybe we weren't heard and seen by our parents. Maybe we weren't validated by our parents. And so we developed this fear that I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable, right? And we maybe had a fear of making a mistake because as a kid, when we made a mistake, we got yelled at, we got hit, we got whatever, you know? And so we those fears, you know, were created usually from something that did happen at one point in time. But, you know, I would encourage you and invite you to ask yourself, is that really happening to me right now? Also, when we give our power to this, to the fears that we have, we stay stuck. And you know what? Often there is a payoff. There's a payoff to staying stuck. Maybe 
protection is a way. Maybe we feel like a false sense of security and safety. Maybe we're trying to control what we cannot control. People, places, things, situations. You know, if you think about, like if I think about, um, if I'm afraid that if somebody knew the real me that they couldn't love me, you know, maybe maybe what I'm going to do is only show a certain side of myself to people. You know, not show them the real me. Because I'm just like, no, if they, if they knew the real me, they wouldn't listen to me. They would not love me. They won't, you know, they won't ever talk to me again, et cetera, et cetera. So I only show them the version of myself that I, that I want them to know. Guess what? That's not the real me. And that's not me being authentic. You know, when we control, when we try to control people, places, things, situations, we're often trying to force an outcome. And sometimes we're manipulating and we're not even realizing it. But I want you to remember something. Resistance to what is keeps us stuck and disempowered. I'm going to say that again. Resistance to what is keeps us stuck and disempowered. It's only when we take responsibility for ourselves, right? Because we can't take responsibility for other people. They have to do that. But we can take responsibility for ourselves. We can accept what is. We can have gratitude for what we do have. Life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. There are lessons to be learned. And that's really where the growth happens. If everything was always going according to our plan, right? The way we wanted to, like if the outcome was always the way we wanted it to, how could we ever be grateful? How could we ever learn? How could we ever grow? We couldn't. I read this in a uh, book by Melody Beatty, and she says, instead of asking, why is this happening to me? Ask yourself instead, what am I learning now? And I love it. I love it. You know, so often we get attached to the way that we think we want things to go, right? We get attached to certain outcomes that we want, right? And we buy into the fear, which prevents us from moving forward, growing, evolving into the best version of ourselves. What ifing, future tripping, living in the past, maybe we're afraid of the same thing happening again, or maybe we're playing a victim saying this always happens to me. Are we sure that this always happens to us? Maybe the same thing has been happening multiple times because there's a lesson that we haven't learned yet. I believe that all mistakes are repeated until the lesson is learned. So again, what can you learn from this? I want to share a story with you. And I did not make this story up, but I heard this story about six months ago and it really, really impacted me. So now this is my way of telling it. So I'm sure that I'm might be leaving certain things out, but this is just the way I'm going to tell it to you guys. So you can see the power in letting go of your fear. Okay. So there's a little girl and she, she is with her mother and they're like at a grocery store or something like that. And there's a machine that has this fake pearl necklace in it. Right. And the little girl sees it and she's like, mommy, mommy, you know, I really, I really want this, uh, pearl necklace. It's so beautiful. So her mother, you know, you can put money in the machine and get it. So her mother puts money in the machine, gets the pearl necklace, gives it to the little girl. The little girl is so happy, right? This is just made her year. And so the little girl puts the fake pearl necklace on. She, you know, she's wearing this necklace all the time. She never takes it off. And her mother tucks her into bed every single night. And her mother goes in to her bedroom. This was like maybe like a week later or something like that. Her mother goes into her bedroom and says, Bridget, do you like your necklace? And she's like, I love my necklace. And she says, I know you love your necklace, but could you take your necklace off and give it to me? And the little girl, her eyes just start welling up and those tears just start falling. And she goes, mommy, I I don't want to give you this necklace. Please don't take this necklace from me. And her mother says, okay. And she leaves the bedroom, right? Okay, so then the next night, her mother comes to tuck her in and says, Bridget, 
Could you take off your necklace and give it to me? Same thing happens. The little girl's eyes start welling up with tears. They start falling down her face and she says, mommy, please don't make me take off this necklace. She's clinging to this necklace with her hands, so afraid of it being taken away from her. And so this whole cycle goes on for like weeks. Like the mother keeps asking her, can I have your pearl necklace? And the daughter keeps getting scared, very scared, doesn't want to give it because she, it's all she knows. It's all she knows. And she loves it. It's all she knows. And after a few weeks, her mother comes in to tuck her in and she says, Bridget, could you give me your necklace? Could you take off your necklace for me? And the little girl thinks about it for a minute. And then she takes off her necklace and she gives it to her mother. She trusts her mother in that moment. Her mother then gives her a real pearl necklace. So I loved this story because it shows that sometimes we're clinging to something that we think we want or we think is a real thing. And we're so afraid to let it go. We're so afraid to let go of that fear, fear of the unknown, fear of losing something, you know, and by her letting go, surrendering and trusting her mother, which you could use as an analogy for the universe, God, higher power, whatever you want to call it. When we trust life, right. And we give up these fears, these things that we think we know, we might just get something a lot better. We might just get something real. When we let go of these false thoughts, these false fears, fear, you know, false evidence appearing real. When we let go of the, this false thing, we might just get the real thing in return. This story is just so, so powerful for me. Like I said, we all get fears. We're always going to get fears. We're human beings. But if we're aware of our fears, we can act regardless of them. We can act regardless of them. Courage is when you act despite your fears. That's one of my favorite quotes. Courage is when you act despite your fears. You know, trust life. Trust where you're being guided to. I truly believe that if we trust life, universe, God, whatever, higher power, whatever you want to call it, and we learn from our choices, we can grow into a better version of ourselves every single day, day by day. So enjoy the journey. Enjoy the lessons that you're being taught. Faith over fear. Faith cannot exist with fear. You cannot have faith if you have fear. I invite you to take your power back from your fears. If you give your power to your fears, they can run your life. When you feel that uncomfortable feeling, you know, sometimes people get like, maybe their heart skips a beat or maybe, um, they feel it in their gut or wherever you feel it, right? That means that, in my opinion, that means that maybe, maybe, just maybe, there's an opportunity for growth there. Maybe you're being pushed a little bit out of your comfort zone. But I have to tell you, I have learned over time that the only place where true growth can happen is outside of the comfort zone. Does that mean you have to take a huge leap out of your comfort zone? No. You can just take a baby step out of your comfort zone. If we live in the past, we're not truly living. It's it's great to learn from the past, you know, to learn the lessons that we're being taught by life, right? So if we're afraid to take risks because of these fears we have, because of things that have happened to us in the past, we're not really living. If you have cancer and your cancer is now in remission, what a blessing, right? What a blessing. But we might have a fear that the cancer is going to come back. The thing is, we don't know. But what we do know is that you have this current moment, this present moment. So how are you going to live your life right now in the present moment? If you spend your time worrying about if the cancer is going to come back, your brain is not going to be in the present moment. I encourage everybody whether you've had cancer or not, to live in the present moment. The past is gone. The future is not here yet. The only way that I believe we can truly live our lives is by being right in the present moment. Is that easy to do? Hell no. (laughs) 
Is it? No. So this is a daily practice. This is becoming very aware of our thoughts, right? So the call to action is, I want you to think about what am I afraid of? What are my fears? I would make a list of your fears. You might come up with more than you thought. I know I did when I did this. So what are you afraid of? Ask yourself, are these things from your past? You know, were these fears created due to things that happened to you in your past? If the answer is yes, what could you learn from those situations? You know, what could you learn from those situations instead of internalizing what happened, you know, instead of creating a story about what happened, for example, if I was with in a relationship for, you know, or a marriage for like, I don't know, 25 years and it didn't work out, you know, if I create a story that I'm not lovable, I'm not good enough, the marriage didn't work because of me, that's me creating a story. I need to look at the hard facts and see what happened. Maybe there's something I need to work on in myself to be a better partner, right? That doesn't mean I'm not lovable. It means I'm a human being and I'm not perfect. So I want you to think about where do these fears come from? What can I learn from my past? I want you to take one action that you can do to move past the fear. So let's give another example. Let's say that you are in a dead end job, right? Let's say you're in a dead end job. You, you dread waking up to go to work. It's just, you're just like, this is not working. Maybe it was working for you at one time. It's not working for you now, but you're afraid to leave that job because you need the money. You need the money to pay your bills. So I'm not telling you to quit your job. <laughs> I want you to take one action. You know, maybe you're, you're afraid to leave your job because you need the money, right? Or maybe you're afraid you're not going to find anything better. I encourage you, I invite you to take one action to move past that fear. Maybe you apply for a new job and just see what happens. Maybe you send your resume out there to a couple of new places. I would encourage you to apply to jobs that you really have a passion for, that you really would love to be doing, even if you think you won't get the job, even if you don't have the experience, even if you have a fear for applying for the job. I would encourage you to apply anyway, because what does it hurt? It doesn't hurt anything. So that's one example. But I encourage you to take one action to move past the fear. You know, maybe if you're having a fear like, I'm not good enough. Why do you feel that you're not good enough? What is it about you? What would you like to improve? And if there's something about yourself that you would like to improve, believe me, I have a list of things about myself that I'd like to, to improve on. And I'm, I'm trying to work on those things, but what is one action you can take today to be just a little bit of a better version of yourself than you were yesterday? Ask yourself, is this happening to me right now? What are the chances of this happening? Is it worth the risk to move forward, to try something new? to live in the present moment, despite my fears? What have I got to gain if I take an action despite my fears? I believe that failure is not when we take a risk and maybe things don't happen the way we want them to happen. I believe failure is when we stay in our comfort zone and we play it safe. Are you playing it safe? Step into your greatness. Coot says that all the time. Coot Blackson says that all the time. Step into your greatness. If you're seeking validation outside of yourself, you will never be good enough. The irony is that you're good enough now just as you are. I invite you, I encourage you to give yourself that validation you seek outside of yourself instead of giving your power away to other people, places, things, and situations. You are a human being. All human beings have inherent worth. You are worthy just as you are right now. You're good enough just as you are right now. Yes, we all have things that we want to work on and change about ourselves. Take action. Nobody else can tell you if you're worthy or not unless you give them that power. Who makes other people the authority on if you're good enough if you don't give them that power? 
Focus on what changes you want to make to become just a little bit of a better version of yourself one day at a time. Life is happening right now while you're paralyzed by your fears. I encourage you to seek professional help if you're struggling with panic attacks or anxiety. Remember, it's about progress, not perfection, okay? Progress, not perfection. Trust the process, trust the journey. Learn from what life is putting in your path. Learn the lessons. You are a warrior. You have been through so much and you are still standing strong, my friends. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Sending you lots of love. Thank you so much for listening. And I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Just remember what you've been through, what you're going through. You're not alone. I relate to you and so many people out there relate to you. So keep coming back and listening to this podcast. And I really, really hope that you continue to learn ideas and tools that will help you achieve your goals. I'm sending you lots and lots of love. If you enjoyed this episode of the Warrior in Progress podcast, then please share it with your friends, share it with everybody. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast as well so you can get notifications on when I release new episodes. Meanwhile, you can follow me on social media. On Facebook, my handle is fully committed 13 and on Instagram, my handle is fully underscore committed 13. You can find out more about my work at mckeehealth.com. That's M C K E E H E A L T H.com. And make sure to download my free Tame Your Inner Critic guide at mckeehealth.com. And you can learn how to stop beating yourself up, how to stop sabotaging yourself so that you can achieve your goals. Remember, you're a warrior in progress and you can do anything you set your mind to.